This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Remember that time I made an arcade joystick to control a combat robot? Today, I want to ramp it up. With these four joysticks, I want to create two separate arenas, which are a one-on-one -on -one fight for members of the public to just kind of come up, grab hold of a stick and start fighting. That does mean, of course, we're going to need to build four sets of these electronics and also four sets of electronics for four separate robots, which is a whole lot of soldering and especially a lot of SMD soldering, but that is where PCBWay comes in. Thanks to their SMD assembly service, they have provided these 10 ESCs fully ready to go that just need a brain on the back of them. I'm gonna be using the ESP32 again because of course these need to talk to the joysticks and the easiest way to do that is with an ESP to ESP32 link. So I designed up these boards and gave them a bill of materials and then they have just produced these very, very cool little ESCs. So they've just got a motor driver on them and some protection circuitry for them, but this has saved me a whole lot of time and fiddliness to get all of these working. I'm still not the greatest at SMD soldering, so being able to just order these directly is perfect. And I have got 10 of these so that we can sit down and make a couple of spares as well as the four robots that we wanna make for the actual arenas. Just in case anything gets broken, these are gonna be in the hands of the public. So of course, uh, things can definitely get broken fairly easily. For these boards, we just need to solder in some motor connectors and a servo connector, and then the ESP32. There we go, so that is one ESC and receiver basically done. The only thing we haven't got in here yet is the power connectors, which go on this front side here. Uh, but I am not gonna do those until we've got them into the robots, because I was thinking about putting little actual power leads on these, but I don't actually need to. These electronic systems aren't gonna come out of these robots ever, and the batteries are gonna be inbuilt. So I'm probably just gonna solder them in once we've got some chassis together. But before we get to chassis, I have a lot more work to do. Uh, I need to get all of these going, but we're not going to sit here and do this together. I will do all of these off camera. And the next thing you'll see is me looking at, soldering on these joysticks is pretty similar. We've just got a set of ports here, which I have removed the actual plastic bit out of because we did not need that at all. Uh, it is gonna be interesting trying to hold this in these little arms. I'm not sure they're gonna be strong enough to hold up the whole thing. Let's, <laughs> not really. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna have to work that out and then uh, solder in some wires up here. And once in place, then those wires just get soldered onto the ESP32. Now, I could have used connectors for these, but what I really want is for these to last a while. So we're gonna hard solder everything just to make sure that it survives. And the final little bit of soldering to do is to connect up the actual electrical bit of an arcade button. That is what is inside the arcade button. We'll put this in to an actual arcade button later, but for now, again, I have an interesting problem of how I hold this thing while soldering to it. I think that's our best bet. I have already soldered the wires onto the ESP32, so all we need to do is just connect them. Now, our electronics are mostly sorted, we really need to actually look at the chassis for these robots. So these are three of the chassis that I'm gonna be running for these particular robots. As mentioned, I'm gonna be running four separate robots, but if you wanna see the fourth one, you either need to come to Havoc or wait until after Havoc. I'll probably put out a video on the fourth one after Havoc as well. But for now, we're gonna go through three builds all at once. And realistically, these are very, very similar to each other because they require the same steps of putting in the battery connectors, Mounting in the motors, mounting in the electronics, mounting in the servo, putting on some wheels, and putting the lid on. Okay, here are our three completed robots. We have one hammer and then two flippers. This guy is slightly disconnected from his servo, but that's fine. I've just got to put a little rubber, rubber band in there just to make that work a little bit better. And then we've got a lifter here designed by Steve 
uh, who you've seen on the channel before. He builds some interesting things, and I was really grateful that he offered to design one of these demo robots. Uh, with those together, they're looking really good. I'm quite happy with the color palette and how these laid out. Blue and green are gonna fight each other, and then the ghost is going to fight the other robot that I'm not showing you right now. Uh, with those done, it is time to actually build the arenas, because I need two complete arenas. One for this fight, and one for this fight. With things cut, it's time to make some angle brackets, and I didn't want to make these, so I bought some angle brackets. And I thought that this was going to be as simple as drilling a hole in one of these so that I could then sit down and put a riv nut in it, and then this would be my system for attaching things like the side panels. Basically anything I didn't want to attach permanently, I could just attach with riv nuts. However, as you can see, messing around with this didn't really work too well. The drilling wasn't great and it didn't actually fit this riv nut, so I need to go higher again. I would need like a nine and a half drill bit, which my step drill does not do. So I scrapped this idea because not only is this going to take too long to drill, it is also going to take a while to actually get the rib nuts in correctly too. So let's do something else. And by that, I mean 3D printing. Here we have basically a ton of 3D prints. Some of these are for like a replacement for these parts, which are these guys here. They are designed so that they can be screwed this way, but they have a captive nut slot in the bottom of them and a hole for an M6 bolt out the top. And then these ones are specifically for holding the sheet at an angle because the front panel of acrylic, which I'm gonna run, isn't actually flat, it is at an angle. So we've got some blocks that bolt into some pieces of wood and hold everything at an angle. And again, they have a hole for an M6 nut in the back of them, which means that basically all of these can have a nut inserted into them. And so that's my next job, is to sit here, probably for quite a while, and install nuts into every single one of these. And the process is quite simple. Put a bolt through, wind a nut on until it gets down into the plastic, and then sit here, and I'm gonna grab a screwdriver in a second, but sit here with a screwdriver and just force these nuts into place. They are ever so slightly undersized. Basically the whole point here is that once they are in, they are not coming back out again. With the brackets sorted, it was time to keep working on the woodwork, which meant marking out and drilling all of my things, then actually adding those brackets and connectors to the frame rails. Then we glued and screwed those frame rails together. This took a little bit of time to get everything square and all kind of lined up a little bit. And then of course we turned everything over and glued and screwed that entire thing to the base, which also took a little bit of time because there is a section that holds the acrylic, which needs to be fairly straight. And that meant needing to flip things over and back and forth a couple of times to get that in the right spot before screwing it down. Once all of that was left to dry, it was then painted, or at least the base was painted that the robots are going to drive on. And with that done, we added in some more brackets. These ones will hold the acrylic, and then we painted the whole thing black, or at least all the rest of it black that is going to be shown. While waiting for the black paint to dry, I glued and screwed the back wall to the top and added even more brackets which will hold the acrylic from the top. Then of course we painted all of that as well. Finally we need to drill and sand the actual piece of wood that holds the joysticks. This gets a little bit of extra attention because it is the part that the public is going to interact with the most, hence why it gets sanded down to 120 grit before being painted. But unfortunately during the painting process it broke so I had to glue it all back together again, which meant clamping it up overnight, and then I had to sand everything back down and repaint it, you know, at least in that specific spot. Oh, oh, okay, we are getting so close to the finish line on this project now, but I, I am exhausted. I honestly 
miscalculated how much time this project was going to take. I honestly thought it was going to be like two weekends worth of work and I would be done. But here we are three and a half weeks later and I have spent a lot of time on this project uh, to the point that it just started taking up evenings and things. I, the last week has been like most of my waking time outside of work has been building these arenas. Oh, I am so, so good. Like, I'm I'm so happy we're nearly done with this. I, 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 I can't wait to be done. Speaking of being done though, there is one more thing that I have not done yet that has been uh, worrying me this entire project, and that is drilling holes in the acrylic that I need to hold all of the protective screens. These are not going to be protective screens to stop the robots damaging people, it's more for the people to stop not damage the robots. So they're only three millimeters thick, which means I'm very, very worried about cracking any of this material while I cut it, and I've only got enough stock to do just the arenas that I have. I didn't get any spare because uh, I'm paying for this all out of my own pocket and I didn't have the funds to do spare parts. So we're just going to go with what we've got and hope that we don't crack anything because this is very, very thin sheet stock. Uh, I do have a step drill, which is apparently the best way to do this, but f fingers crossed. <laughs> Because I was worried about balancing a giant sheet on my drill press, I tried to drill the acrylic with a hand drill to start with, but I didn't have enough power to get through. So instead I had to do this kind of janky setup on top of some filament boxes to get everything leveled and supported, but thankfully it worked and the drills went through fine. So let's do a nice satisfying protective cover peel. And with that, it is time to build. So we're gonna start by hanging the door on the back wall. Then we're going to need to fit all the electronics in. Now these need to be fairly secure in the back here. I'm only putting in two bolts for now, but they will have four bolts eventually. I'm also using double-sided tape to hold down the ESP32s. As you can see, there's lots and lots of cable in here, so they had some room to adjust where everything was gonna sit, just in case things got in the way of any of the connectors or any of the brackets that I made up. Once I've got both sets of joysticks in place, we then need to bolt down the panel. These are a little bit weird because the wood seems to have warped a little bit, which means that you kind of need to manhandle them into place to get them to actually bolt down properly. Could also be my drilling wasn't perfect as well. Once those are in place, we need to slot in and bolt onto side panels, which does actually show that my drilling isn't really great. The five holes along the bottom don't all line up, but that's okay because this design changed a little bit in the design process, so they're not all really needed to hold this panel on, so I'm only going to use a couple of them for now. Once those are on, then we can turn around and put the back on as well. Now this gets held in place with some supporting pins and also the uprights. There are some brackets to go on the back of them, but we're not going to wor worry about those for now. And then a nice big push gets that secured down in place and then it gets screwed in at the top corners. Once the back is on we can screw in the control box which turns on and off the power to the joysticks allowing us to kind of get hold of the robots without people driving them away from us. And with that we can put down the main acrylic sheet and again my drilling here isn't perfect. I can get bolts into the bottom but not into the top that is something I'll have to fix later on. And with that we can do this. Hell yes, it works. I am so pleased with how this thing has come out. It has been a ton of work and I've still got a little bit more to do yet, but 
that is going to be it for this video. Uh, if you've liked this, come to have it. Come to Science Alive. See these things in person. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.